You'll see a couple of contenders in the ongoing Player of the Year race, Athia Thitico and Minji Lee, Lydia Ko, who's leading the Vera Trophy right now. You see one of the names on the left there who we haven't seen for a while, the world number one, Jin Young Ko. Yeah, good to see her back, making her first start since August, missed two straight cuts, including the AIG Women's Open, before confirming that a wrist injury would force her to take a break from golf. Now, earlier today, she spoke with the media about her wrist, saying, quote, I'm a little bit uncomfortable that the wrist continues to come up. It's really difficult. I don't know how to explain what my wrist is like at the moment. It's not fully okay, but I'm not in a lot of pain. It's really difficult to explain the state of my wrist. But I have to say it's not at its worst. I don't think it's impacting my game that much. And if I don't do well, I don't think I can blame it on my wrist. I'm just going to do my best out there. Paige McKenzie, we've watched this player have an un Jin Young Ko like season. How concerned are you that she's coming back now with her wrist not necessarily 100%? I am concerned, and it's so interesting that we're having this conversation as she's continuing to be ranked number one in the world, but it certainly has not been a typical Jin Young Ko season. And I think there may have been a lot of wrist injury stuff going on early in the year that we didn't know about, but it did show up in her golf game. Uh, when you look at her driving distance, she lost eight yards off of the tee between last year and this year. And to me, that was concerning, but it's concerning with how she then hits her approach shots in. Jin Young Ko has historically been one of the best ball strikers the LPGA Tour has ever seen, certainly in the last decade. Uh, and when you compare the last two seasons, in 2021, when she hit the fairway, she hit 84% of her greens. Now, that just deserves a round of applause because that's extraordinary. Even this season, minus that eight yards, so think about eight yards more into the greens, she still was hitting 80%. Where the real difference matters is when she misses the fairway. A uh, massive difference because, again, she's eight yards further away from the green, so she's lost 9% on her greens and regulation, barely hitting over 50% or half of her greens uh, this season from outside of the fairway. So I think when, I, when I'm looking at Jin Young Ko, I saw all of that happen, and I'm thinking uh, it has been an off year. Now knowing the injury, you can understand that even if it's feeling okay and she was playing earlier in the season, it may not be okay in her golf game. Those stats are extremely telling, Paige. I will point out that at the end of last year, mm -hmm. she was struggling with the wrist in Naples as well. She hit no more than a 52-degree wedge before every round in Naples in the CME Group Tour Championship. And what did she do? She hit her final 63 greens in regulation, shot 8 under 63. Nelly Cordes said, I just watched the Jin Young Ko show. That's how good she was even when she wasn't 100%. So I wonder, Eamon, if it's possible that as she makes this return, She's just kind of lowering the expectations just a little bit for the outside and maybe for herself. And maybe just the athlete and the competitor will take over at this point, even if the wrist is not 100%. I don't know if you can lower the expectations for Jin Young-Ko because historically she's been like a human version of Rust-Oleum. Yeah, she, yeah, she won that CME Group Tour Championship in November of last year. She then took four months off dealing with that injury, yeah. and she came back and won the HSBC. Last year, she took six weeks off working on her swing, came back and won Portland. You know, she took 10 weeks off in 2020 during the, the pandemic and came back and finished tied third in a tournament. So she, she handles rust better yeah. than anyone else. And with that kind of record, it's very hard to then lower the expectations. I, I would tend to try to lower them in terms of what I would expect from her this week given that she's only had three top tens on the LPGA Tour since March. She had ten straight top tens before mm. that period began. So there, there's definitely a, an, a little diminishment of her game that we have seen this year that is probably a combination of the injuries and the, uh, the confidence issues. I'm not concerned as much about her coming back with, with the wrist injury and, and what she said about it today, simply because there's no evidence that she has been in any way reckless before she or coming back too early. She's taken long breaks from the tour before, which to me is an encouraging sign that she's probably not risking too much mm. this time, but it's still a matter of concern if the world number one's telling you that she's far from 100%. Paige, there's also been a diminishing of the rivalry. I mean, we thought last year we saw it was Jun Young Ko mm. and Nelly Korda. So outside of the wrist, I mean, these are two players that had the headlines a year ago. How much is it something outside the ropes? Maybe not having that 
that competitor to say, well, she just won an Olympic gold medal. She just became number one. She just won a major. Just having that kind of tit for tat that we saw last season. I don't, I don't know if that's what motivates Jin Young Ko. I, I think she is a lot more concerned with how she is doing things because she does things so well and so differently. So I, I don't know if that matters as much. I will say I kind of agree with Eamon in that I'm not necessarily concerned this week coming back. Uh, I'm concerned with the sustainability mm. of coming back. And we've got a couple weeks left in the LPGA Tour season, and it's going to be trying if she's continuing to still deal with this. It's not just a one-off. It's a how is this going to maintain and stabilize for the rest of this season and or moving forward into next year. So that's my, I think, greater concern, big picture.